Okay. <clears throat> Bit of a drone there. Um, and I, I designed this drone uh, to try and explain today um, how I do these things. Um, obviously, as you can see, this is modular based. Uh, your app modular. It, you don't have to use your app modular to do this stuff. You could use software versions of it. Um, or you could indeed use hardware synths or software synths or sample libraries. I've created drones with a whole hot by you know via a whole host of methods. But at the moment I'm in I'm in modular mode. So I'm gonna explain some of the principles I use just to set these things up. And it's nothing it's not complicated. Um <clears throat> really. So uh to begin with then let's um uh, sort of look at the individual elements because all together we've got um, I've got two base drones one which is the root of which I've chosen C1 I've got the second base drone which is a G1 so that's a perfect fifth and then drone um, 2 is F two i think something like that and then the last drone of the four drone elements is um is a c c3 so um yeah they're the, they're the main drone elements i do have a say elements because i do have an, an elements module here um but i'm using that more to create some of the higher end higher frequency uh content but you'll see that when I start to break this down, you'll you'll see what I mean there. Uh, in fact, I also have in my little performance mixer down here. I have some uh, sends, so you can set up sends in here, uh, and I'm using um, a Disting EX in granulator mode. So some of the other higher pitched sort of like pad type sounds are coming from the uh, granulator. Um, and I'm basically feeding the second and third drone into that granulator. But yeah, that'll all come clear, I think, once I start to break this down. So let's look at the the first filter, the C1 uh, filter. Uh, drone, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm not editing that out. This is just a linear uh, take as you find it uh, video, I'm afraid. So um, yeah. I'm basically sending one of my analog oscillators. I've chosen the Lorelei. Um, and it's going into the WASP filter. I use the WASP filter because it's quite characterful, as you'll hear in a minute. Uh, the reason I'm using the, the, the Lorelei, in fact, I'm using two Lorelei oscillators for these drones today. Um, you can use um, LFO into the shape parameter to basically shape the wave. So on the first one, which is going into the WASP, I've used a square wave. Uh, so it's basically pulse width modulation, as you'll hear in a minute. In fact, let me just turn off the uh, uh, reverb for a second. Um, and then I'll bring up the level. I'm controlling the level of the, of the, of the drone uh, via the level input. Or the, so the input level even. So that's dry, no reverb. And I'm, I've got a lot of resonance on this, which is what's giving you that. Uh, the, the, you could research this, but basically the wasp filter is um, it goes back to the uh, to the eighties basically. Um, uses a particular type of chip in an unorthodox way to get this sort of like the sort of like bubbling sound but if I get rid of that for a second so just to explain the pulse width modulation on here so if I just open that filter up so you can hear that pulse width modulation sound there just gives the the drone a little bit more interest 
bring up that resonance for that nice sort of bubbly sound. Okay, so that's that's the first drone. Uh, let's take him out of the equation for a minute. And then the second drone is another Lorelei. I'm using a different output, so this is like a, it basically alters the shape between uh, I think it's a triangle and a saw. So if I, I'd have to look at the manual. But if I open that up now, bring that volume up, and then open the filter a bit as well. Seems to be uh, yeah, you just about see that. Uh, there's an LFO on the shape parameter there, which is giving you that sound. Similar to similar to pulse with modulation, but we're just modulating the wave shape. Let's set that filter back down again. I guess what I should have explained, I've not only got LFO on the wave shapes, but I've also got LFOs on the cutoff frequency of both of these filters. So let's bring back in, um, so we can hear them together. So CV on the cutoff frequency. Changes the level basically of the two uh, drones together. Put a bit of uh, reverb back on it. There's the reverb. I use a lot of reverb. Um, there you go. And I don't know, it might be worth mentioning at the moment because I'm using a. Um, a C1 note for drone 1 and a G1 note for drone 2. If we let's just go to uh, to Reaper the Reaper screen. There you go. <clears throat> so I've got the spectrum analyzer open. And the reason this is important, you've got to really think about this as you're designing any sound really, I guess. Um, and because these are continuous held notes, um, Let's turn, let's turn drone one down. I'll be as quick as possible with this. So the fundamental is, um, is C. Did I say C1 before? It's that C2, isn't it? <laughs> Goodness me. I'm very old, you know. So that's a C2. And then we can just see that little peak coming up there. That's that's the first partial, which is a C3. And then the second partial is a G3. Now if I take that down and then bring the other one up, let's bear with this. So there's the fundamental, G2. And then the first partial is a G3, that's an octave above. And then the third partial is a D4. But what's important is, is that the G3 first partial on the second drone is the same as the third partial of the first drone. Let's bring that up. So what I've had to do here so that I don't get a a massive peak on the uh, on on G3. If I bring up the uh, the EQs, so that's the uh, let's, let's close that down. It's easier just to bring up the other one first. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Let's bring up that one. So that's the that's drone two. This is drone one. So what you can see here, I've put a a little bit of a dynamic cut 
on the first row at g3 and then on the second row the first partial is quite strong in this instance um, because of the, the sound design they have, they have got uh, um, and the filter I've got um, resonance so and then there's the wave shaping as well so I've got quite a strong burst partial and so again I've got another quite a deep cut um, if I took those out let me just take that out and just bypassing both EQs and then go back to the spectrum analyzer so you'll see how the the G3 peak there is quite strong so to tame that in this situation and again because the held notes and I can close these now so that basically takes care of that peak at G3 okay just thought I'd explain that and hopefully that'll be the only Reaper thing that I do. I might, I might go back to Reaper a bit later on to look at some of the higher frequency stuff. Okay, so, yeah, a, di a diversion slightly, but I don't think it's needed. As I say, it's part of the sound design process, especially with drones. Not especially with drones, I suppose with everything, really. Um, so, that's the first two drones and I'll leave the reverb on because what I'm going to do now is take these out of the uh, out of the mix and then go to drone two and three so drone two turn that level right up So this is coming in gradually. So what I've done on the, for the so for the design of this, in fact, hold on, I'm just gonna take just reminded me there. I'm gonna take the send level down. So I don't want to bring that that higher pitch note is what is the uh, is the granulator. So I've just turned the sends down on those two. Um. So once I get above my root and my perfect fifth. All the other drones after that, I get those to sort of like go down to almost nothing and then come in gradually and then fade out again. So that's what you can hear here with here here with drone three. Um, it comes in quite strong and it disappears again. I know the, the the way I'm doing that. So there's a number of ways you can do it. You could use a, a, a VCA if you want voltage controlled amplifier, but I'm just using the cutoff frequency of the. Um, of the filter I've got an LFO on the um, on the filter cut off quite a deep so the attenuators almost up at full it's about 80% thereabouts with the cut off frequency on the main dial down to around about 30% the oscillator coming into this I'm using the dope for oscillator square wave output with a bit of puts modulation again again just to give it that sort of like different uh you know a bit more of an interesting timbre on the uh on the wave to start off with um so that's that one and then and what note is that that's uh i'm gonna just look on my spectrum analyzer to remind me f3 <laughs> f3 so the drone 3 is f3 uh, so let's take that one out a second and we'll bring in drone four. And again, just to remind me, that is C4. Um, and again, it's coming in and out. But I should explain at this point, this is where it gets a little bit complicated. What I decided what what to do for the fourth drone is not use... Uh, subtractive synthesis I've used some wave folding so this is kind of going over to west coast whereas the subtractive stuff i.e. you've got high harmonics uh, a lot a lot of harmonics in the waveform which you then filter out with the filters that's subtractive synthesis I'm now using um, a wave folder um, to change the um, 
the shape of the wave. In fact, the volume of it now, because I'm not using a filter now to change the volume, sorry for jumping around here, but uh, I'm using a, um, an, a, um, a VCA. So if I, and I'm using a, um, a, an LFO on the VCA control to bring the volume in and out. So let me just take that out of there. I'm going to plug him into this over here because then I can use that little knob there to control the volume. But if I just leave that up there for a second, let's turn the uh, reverb off. <coughs> so this is my wave folder and I've got a couple of LFOs into the two inputs. So basically with the wave folder, so it's a sine wave going into it. And so that's, <laughs> I'm going off on a tangent here. This is, uh, uh, again, yeah, I suppose it's, it's valid. Uh, so from my Disting Mark III oscillator here, I've got this in sine wave mode. And basically the wave folder, it just basically folds the, uh, as it, it increases the volume of the sine to a point where the top of the sign then gets clipped and sent down below the, uh, the, the I'm not going to do very well at all I guess what I could do actually is put a link in the description to this particular wave folder here so but there's two oscillators there's two um, sorry there's two LFOs on this because it allows me to change separately the top of the wave fold and then the lower part of the wave fold I suppose I could. Let's go back to um, Reaper because I do have a uh, an oscilloscope set up here. So instead of it being a straightforward sign, you can see it's um, basically folding the wave. Let me just increase the amplitude of the oscilloscope. There you go. So you can almost see a sine wave there, but it, it's it's folding it to get that sort of timbre change. So from a plain old sine wave and a wave fold, you can get some quite interesting waveforms. So let's turn that off. Go back to my uh, camera. And, uh, and then I take that out of there, put that back into the LFO, and that gives me, me basically my volume control Okay, let's bring that other one in again. Okay. Now I mentioned sends. So on this little mixer here, I've got a little send output. It's only a mono send, but that's fine. It does what I need it to. And I've got the send output going into my uh, Disting EX, which is in granulator mode. So it's like a little bit of a granular effect. And then I've got a stereo output from that, then going into my door via this little, little passive mixer here. And basically, I've got six cables going to my, uh, my audio interface. So let's put a bit of reverb on that, so you can hear the reverb on it. And then if I actually open up the aux sends, increase the aux sends. And very briefly go back to Reaper. So you can see the spectrum analyzer. So you can see there's quite a bit of high end stuff there now. Okay, and then finally, um, I guess, or well, the final part of it anyway, part, final part of this little drony sound design thing. Let's just take this out of the uh, mix and then let, I'll leave those sends up because I'll just forget otherwise. Um, waiting for that granulator effect just to fade off slightly. Really out there. So I'm using a module called Element. So, you know, 
this is a complex one. I mean, I've, I've tried to keep everything simple up until this point. I suppose it went very simple to a little bit more complicated with the wave fold, but now this is quite complex. But I like using this particular module because I can use um, lots of LFOs on some of the parameters. Um, and basically, it's, it's called Elements. And I think you can get this in VCV, but you've probably got to pay for it. I'm not sure. Um, but basically, it's it's a uh, mutable instruments uh, voice, and it's called a uh, a modal synthesizer. So basically, you've got a um, um, an exciter on the left hand side, and you've got a choice of bow, blow, and strike, and then you've got the resonator. On the right hand side which you can control the brightness and the position of the uh, uh basically of whatever this uh, thing it's modeling wherever you hit it or you know blow on it bow on it whatever it it will give you the a different sort of um, a different sound so i've got lfos on those um to alter the timbre over a period of time but what i've also got on this which is what uh, makes it more of a noise source is I've got some FM going in here and I've got white noise basically uh, but so that it's not white noise all the time I am using um, another voltage controlled amplifier here so I've got white noise coming out of my noise generator goes into my input of the uh, of the of the, of the voltage controlled amplifier uh which is then it's got which has got lfo on the uh, level of that so that's what's causing the volume to uh, sorry not the volume but the the amount of audio that goes into the fm input or white noise and then so the, then the output that's the white noise output into the fm input and then the fm control on here is maxed so that's 100 percent. so let's bring that in so you can hear it So it can be quite harsh. And I've obviously got to keep my eye on that. Probably a little bit too loud, that bit. But if we, if we let the LFOs do their business. And let's go to Reaper so you can see the Spectrum Analyzer. long LFOs obviously the LFOs once they're lying at a certain point then it'll go a little bit mad <laughs> he says and then nothing happens <laughs> uh, when there's no FM then obviously you get the the tonal thing coming out of elements as well Oh, there you go. And a bit of harsh stuff. There you go. Yeah, so that's that's elements on those. That, that's providing a little bit of perhaps, I don't know, a bit of interest um, to the drone. I don't know. I like it. <laughs> Uh, and if I like it, there's a possibility that everybody else, well, not everybody, that somebody else will like it as well. So that's basically it, to be honest. I've, I've covered everything there. I've opened up too long over it. Um, and I think, as I said, the principles, whether you're using, you know, whatever you're using, software modular or hardware synths or software synths or sample libraries, the, the principle is, is to for me is to start off with the base and then work up the other parts of the drone going higher up the frequency uh, spectrum 
um, and using modulation so that can be if it's in your door if it's like bitwig or even reaper or whatever you can you can put in automations to uh, uh, change parameters over time or change the levels just bring these other drones in and that's the point i'm trying to get across here this just because you've seen me doing this in modular today doesn't mean to say that it has to be modular. You can do this with anything really. Um, and then, yeah, that's it really, I think. It's, that's the, as I said, very simple uh, drone in a way. But it provides me with a, uh, like a tonal bed that I can then pick up my guitar and play over the top of it or I can probably foot I can probably also uh, perform certain bits so let's say there's a point where I decide that I want to actually increase the frequency of this filter say I can do that manually same with this one This one. So it doesn't have to be all LFO, or if you're using your door with that with, with automations, you can have a number of automations laid on top of each other in some doors. I know you can. I know I can I can do that in Reaper. Um and yeah, that's it really, I guess. I don't know how long that was, I'll check it in a minute when I turn it off, stop recording. Uh, I hope the audio was okay because I've um, I was going to try and set, record separate audio, but then I thought, well, I can't uh, I can't duck it. The way I've got my system set up at the moment with OBS is I use my uh, Lavelia mic um, to duck the audio as I'm talking, and if I've recorded the uh, the audio separately in Reaper and then tried to merge them together. Uh, I'd have just got out of my debt because I'm not that I'm not that clever really. Uh, <laughs> I just like doing simple drones like this. Um, yeah, so I guess if you've got any questions, um, you can either leave the question in the comments below um, or. I know some of you know me from a couple of different discords on the discord servers, discord communities um, Yeah, and ask away, ask questions uh, if there's any sort of things that I've not really covered if I've, if I've gone over stuff a little bit too quickly um, yeah let me know and I'll try and improve <laughs> assuming I might do a next one, I don't know really I'm not, as I said I'm not really great at tutorials I just like making music especially drone music right then let's uh, I'll wind this down and we'll call it quits thank you very much for watching if you got this far